Right then, um, a lot of people have been asking me questions about this remote camera head that I've built. Um, so rather than answer hundreds of emails, I thought I would just do a video that kind of tours it a little bit. So uh, I'll start with this then. So this is the head, it moves like that, and around that way. It's a bit noisy, but so far I haven't found it to be much of a problem. If you use decent microphones and you sort of plan ahead, then it's not so much of a problem. It's powered by these motors, which are well MFA Commo drills. Uh, they are 810 to 1 geared, so they're strong, but that's also what makes them loud, unfortunately, because the gear train grinding. Uh, powered, well, the power transmission is transferred through these toothed belts here. The pulleys, unfortunately, you can't really get them with these size bores. There's a 6mm one here and a threaded 12, uh, M12 here and I had to get them uh, widened, sort of turned out on a lathe. A friend had to do that for me. But uh, other than that it's, it's just literally a case of the motor turning the camera platform around on that one. The um, bearings are something you should definitely look into. These are these sort of plasticky ceramic inserts in a sort of glass nylon and then what it is, bearing frame type thing and the advantage of these is they're very light the insert, it's that little white bit there uh, doesn't actually rotate, it's just a bushing and it allows the, the shaft to slip round inside it but they are, I think they're about 5 quid each and there's 3 on this particular thing but they're well, well worth using over big pressed steel bearings because they barely weigh anything so definitely worth uh, getting those uh, the camera's just an FX1, could use a Z1, probably could use like an XL2 or an XLH1. You'd certainly use the Canon XHA1 because that's pretty much the same size. But any size you build, as long as you make enough room sort of between here and here for it to rotate over, then you won't have much of a problem. Uh, the camera is held on with this screw, it's not just the red strap, that's, the strap is just a sort of seat belt really, just as a bit of extra insurance, but it's held on with this standard, I think it's quarter inch screw here so top is very much the same as the bottom but I um, use these axile bearings as, as they call them, it's a bit dark I don't know if you can see but uh, they are like washers but the, the middle one has needles all around its face so it can rotate along its axis the original idea was to have the holes 14 millimeters and the shafts 12 so that I could slide the shaft around inside the hole to get the belt tight and to get it straight and then tighten it up, but unfortunately that didn't last too long because the belt slips and it pulls it in. So I've had to rivet these aluminium plates on to hold them. Um, the power is transmitted through one cable, which I was particularly uh, keen to to get it working this way. But it's a Bulgin style plug with eight cores. I'm only using seven of the cores because the, the head uses four and the LANC control system uses two of them, so the one in the middle is still free. But I should, I would advise you if you do use these, that these pins are pretty useless. They're cheap plastic, well they're not very good, and you have to get a knife in there and bend the pins out, otherwise they don't even touch the prongs inside the plug. So what you end up with is a really dodgy connection, so just stick something in and push the plugs out. You can see now I've done this, it's a really positive click, whereas before it just kind of fell out if you knocked it too hard. So the cable, which is 7 core trailer cable from Maplin, everything else comes from RS or Maplin, but this is just 7 core trailer cable as they call it for doing lights on your caravan or whatnot. And it runs to the controller, which is this box here. Inside this, oops, what am I doing? I'm zooming. Inside this there is a, a Robotech AX500 robot control board which will allow two motors at 15 amps each which is, oh, these draw about five I think, so I think we're going we're gonna to be okay. It's powered from this battery which is, as I say, 17 amp power, 12 volts. It came from one of those big yellow jump starters that you can buy to sort of jump start your car if it runs out. And uh, that works quite well. I haven't, I haven't been caught short with it yet. It's never run out on me, but I just charge it with a standard car charger, so hopefully it'll be okay. I've also taken a um, standard cigarette lighter plug off which powers the LCD monitor. It's a bit 
colours are a bit funny, but yeah. Um, so the controller, inside here, as I mentioned, the AX500 from, I got it from Active Robots in the UK. The joystick is an APEM uh, 5000 series, which is, it's a funny way of doing it really, but it, it's a stick that controls directly, manipulates two 5k potentiometers. So you have uh, two extremes, one is zero volts and one is five volts and the middle, like where it is now, is two and a half volts. But because it's a joystick and it only goes from there, I can't. but because it only goes from sort of here to here, it doesn't go the whole motion, it only uses uh, three volts to two volts, which is a pain because the controller board is obviously looking for five to zero, so, but uh, yeah, Cosma, um, who's the guy that designs all the controller boards for Robotech, has designed a beta program which you can install, firmware that you can install on the controller which will allow you to change um, the parameters which works out quite nicely. This is a 15 pin uh, D sub socket which allows me to connect the controller to the computer without taking out the case because it's a bit of a pain to take out the case. Um, which is well that's useful for programming in mo movements because you can actually program in movements and then play them back. Uh, a lot of people ask if that means I can do motion control with it and uh, I would be inclined to say that it probably wouldn't work because the motors are not very precise also it's a shame but there's a little bit of play in them as well which is a partly faults of the belt but partly also faults of the motor you can hear the, the gears tightening up and loosening inside but I think unfortunately motion control probably wouldn't work but uh, we can certainly have a go at AQ stepper motors, are those ball can't control stepper motors anymore. Um, these two switches control the direction. Um, so in the middle is off, so you do that, nothing happens. You see there, nothing's happening. And then you switch it that way, and it goes one way. You can move the switch the other way, push the lever the same way, and it goes the other way. It's really just a way of, if you've got different operators and they have different preferences, because another guy I know that operates this, um, he likes to have it so when you push right the camera head moves left uh, so you can set that up that way and you can do the same with pan and tilt it's got oh, some pan and tilt, yeah, whatever. it's got a illuminated on off, I thought that was important so you knew that it was on and it's also got a fan cooling system in there, the board does get a little bit warm it hasn't caused a problem but I've been advised by uh, Robotech to make sure it's got airflow over it so that's what I've done the uh, bulging just goes in the back there and it's powered through this IEC lead which probably was a mistake I should definitely change that you can see I've written underneath it not for mains um, I can just see someone plugging a mains cable into that and burning the whole thing but this is actually this is actually just a butchered up IEC cable <coughs> uh, the light controller here is a Manfrotto 521 standard lank the I made this little link cable which goes from the back of the blank into the control box. The three cables from this, this is a standard three pole two and a half millimeter jack plug. This goes into the controller, out through the bulging, all the way up the cable. And at the moment, this is a bit temporary, but at the moment it comes out here. Uh, the Maplin cheap little Chinese plug has a minimum or a maximum material thickness of a millimetre and this frame which I'll come into in a bit is about two so there's no way that's the hole it's going to go in but there's no way it's going to get through that unfortunately so just for that for now it's just taped up this cable here next to it goes at the moment goes through here and it comes out of the middle of the shaft and the reason I did that was just to stop it getting tangled and this has a uh, four pole plug on and that goes straight into the the uh, composite AV plug on the camera and then that goes on, I've, I was trying to run the video through the same cable as the head but unfortunately the power for the head just completely scrambles the video signal so this is standard coaxial screened cable, comes out the other end uh, here, goes into the back of this little screen which I got for £100 from Maplin, it's horrible quality, it's just you know, it's, it's, no, it's not as blue as that in reality, but it's it's not very nice. So, uh, I'll show the link working. That's it zooming in. I'm move it out of the way so it's not looking at me. 
Then I'll turn the motors off. And I'll move it over there, which we're looking at. Uh, what I'm looking at. Okay, look at the drill. Very important tool. Right, so we can zoom in. And the good thing about this, I've yet to really experiment with this, but you can focus it as well. Uh, so that is out of focus, I can't remember whether that's in anyway. So that's pulling the focus in. And as far as I can tell, that's about as sharp as you're going to get it. This monitor is not good for focusing, but that's one of the main reasons why I don't don't bother uh, focusing. I would have had a better quality monitor. But, so you can focus with these two buttons here. This button here is record, and that's a very useful button. And the light flashes on the lamp when it's recording, and you can see the camera should be recording now, uh, like that. <coughs> I can turn that off remotely, and the light flashes to tell me it's not recording anymore. It doesn't flash. But the good thing about that is I can also turn the camera off, which is quite useful if you've got the, the crane up in the air and you can't reach it to turn it off manually. It's quite a good way of doing it. I can turn it back on remotely as well. So uh, that's it back on. I'm going to zoom back out of that. Uh, anything else? Probably not. The frame is 55mm aluminium box section. Uh, it was, I got it off eBay off um, an off cuts shop. And I've got a bit of what's left. Uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, I think. I got two pieces that were a bit longer for than that for about 15 quid and I just cut them with a standard saw, in fact there is the saw and I got them welded, it is worth getting them welded like you could try and sort of rivet sort of angle pieces on but I, I wouldn't bother, I would just get them well welded it costs 30 quid for these two wells but it's quite steep but it's the the, um, the strongest way of doing it so that's probably it really, I can't think of anything else that I've missed. Uh, thing I'll buy that, this is the forks for the stand. Oh blimey, I've been rabbiting on for 13 minutes. Right, I think that's it, so any questions, email me, I'll put my email address on the bottom of the screen or something. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much.